Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, I wanna share with you some info about guitar ergonomics and technique. What's the best way to sit with the guitar, hold the guitar, what angle, what wrist and hand position, stuff like that. What are the, the best practices for guitar ergonomics for longevity? So we can really do this for the long haul. So I have this little slide presentation put together. I'm gonna just teach through it and I hope that you will find it helpful and valuable. And these slides are actually the exact slides from one of the videos in my latest course, which is called Top Notch Technique. Top Notch Technique is a course all about how to massively improve our technical abilities on the guitar, including exactly what exercises to work on and why, so that we can have a much easier time focusing on what we really want to do, which is make meaningful music. So I thought it would be fun to share this little section of the course with you because I think it will be totally helpful completely on its own, but also because this week, if you're watching this video the week that it's posted on YouTube, Top Notch Technique is open for enrollment for the very first time and it's available for a huge discount. And what's super fun is that I haven't even filmed the course yet. It's all ready to go and I will be filming it live next week over a series of five live stream filming ses sessions, um, each with their own Q&A hangout at the end. So members who sign up for the course this week not only get to get it for a huge discount, but they can come to any of those live filming sessions and, and Q&A sessions. So if you want to check out more, you can click the link in the top of the description, learn all about Top Notch Technique, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash T in T. For this video right now, I'm just going to go through the slides and share the info that I have laid out here. For the live course filming, I'll have a bunch more uh, filming tech set up where I can change camera angles and demonstrate each of the techniques and positions that I talk about um, throughout the lessons. I don't have all that set up yet right now, but even without the demonstrations, we're going to cover some really great stuff that I think you will find um, extremely helpful. So just letting you know, but if paid courses, of course, aren't your thing, no worries at all. I think you'll find this little portion of the curriculum super informative. So let's dive in. So here we're talking about what's the right way to hold the guitar, your playing position options for longevity. So I've been calling this dynamic positioning, and you'll see what I mean in a minute here. Um, the first point is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, if you're getting great results if you're making music and you're feeling good, you're feeling healthy, you're feeling strong, you're feeling flexible. Um, let's not worry about what's the right way to do things if there's not a problem that we're trying to solve. Um, but this stuff can be great to keep in mind for when problems do come up and you'll see how there's a lot of room for individuality here more so than, than we tend to think, which is kind of the point of this video. So um, that being said, that you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Having less tension is always, always, always better, right? So even if we're doing things, we're doing great, everything, we're making music that we feel good about, it is worth our time and, and attention to take an inventory of where there might be tension that is excess in our bodies, anywhere in our bodies, not just our hand, not just our arm, but really anywhere. So that's something to, to kind of scan for at all times. If we can find a way to relieve that tension, um, and play guitar in a more relaxed way, always, 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 that's for the better. So as far as what's the right way to play, hold the guitar, sit the guitar, sit with the guitar, what sitting position? I mean, we all, if you think about it for a second, think about how many different ways you've seen someone hold and play the guitar in, in all these different ways. And, and so we know, we know that it's kind of like this open-ended smorgasbord. Like you can, you can do things your own way, you can do whatever you want, but yet... I think we still tend to feel like there's an answer out there that is the right thing. What's the correct thing? What's the thing? What's the way that I'm supposed to do this? That's that's right. So um, that's kind of what we're trying to work through here. So, oh, my slides aren't working there. Okay, there we go. Um, so not only is there no one right way, too much of any one way or sitting holding and holding the guitar is not good. So this takes it to the extreme to, to say, oh yeah, you can kind of figure out and do anything you want. Well, not only that, not only is there not one right way to, to sit with the guitar, if you stay in one position for too long, any position, that is bad news. 
Okay, so here's our little characters here. Very confused because everyone says, oh, sitting is so unhealthy for you. You can get a standing desk. And then it comes out that, oh, actually standing at a standing desk for a long time is really bad for you. And we're like, whoa, what are we supposed to do? You said this thing, you said that thing. So, but if we really think about it, just any position for too long, is really, really bad for your body, right? Laying down feels amazing after a day of not laying down. But if you're laying down for hours and hours and hours, you know, if you're laying down for too long, that also starts to feel really, really uncomfortable for you. So we can take this um, into our guitar playing. So what we want to do is sit dynamically. This is a this is the way that a physical therapist of mine uh, said it exactly. Sit dynamically, meaning the switch positions off and let yourself have a bunch of quote unquote right ways to sit with the guitar and don't lock yourself into this is the correct way and I'm going to be rigid about it and I'm going to sit that way for three hours in a practice session. Sitting dynamically. After I learned that, I remembered that I had a classical guitar professor who used to t tell me about how he would have these practice sessions where he slouched on the couch and he's a very, very technically precise player. I'm mean, just an amazing uh, musician with, with amazing technique. And he would practice slouching while slouching on the couch. The catch is though, uh, that that was within the context of like a five hour practice session, right? Where, um, there's a, sh there's a lot of practice up in the kind of formal classical position, which we're going to talk about it in a second on the next slide, a lot of practice up in that formal position, um, and moving it around to other various positions. One of those being, you know, feeling a little relief from all the, all the kind of proper, um, back straight, sitting upright or holding the arm out to sit back and kind of slouch for a little bit and, and do a little practicing that way, um, was just part of the flow of his dynamic sitting. And I'm not saying everyone should do that, but here's someone who's, you know, at a very accomplished level doing that. And it's quite interesting to say, Hmm, well, okay. Uh, what's, what's up with that? It's not that we should slouch on the couch. I wouldn't, I would never say it that way. It's just a part of sitting dynamically. And um, it's just an example, kind of an extreme example of it. So let's look at the guitar angles and positions here for a second. There is that classical angle. This, we have a picture here of Francisco Tarraga, the, the grandfather of modern classical guitar. Many famous uh, guitar repertoire compositions come from Francisco Tarraga, still played to this day in concerts. And he's sitting, he has his guitar um, a little lower of an angle than a lot of times you'll see people have an angle much higher up to the left, but this is the kind of typical um, classical guitar sitting position. And with this sitting position, there's a three, um, three touch points that create a triangle that people talk about with like the most proper guitar sitting position where the sound hole is going to be angled upward, which is good for like live performance and helping the back of the guitar resonate and the front of the guitar resonate. So the touch points are going to be right here on his chest right here where you can see it's resting on his left leg and then right here touching the corner of the guitar on his right leg and then sitting up with a and and then the rest of it is space the rest of it is space the guitar is not up against your body so i just thought that was worth pointing out for like in in very proper kind of diagrams of classical guitar sitting position it's often talked about to have those three touch points and and this creates kind of a triangle of space between your body and the guitar so Obviously, when we think about this classical position, we think of a footstool. This is kind of an old school, fancy wooden footstool. Now you'll see those those black foldable footstools that um, a lot of classical guitarists use today. Um, and then there's all kinds of devices to help the guitar get up to the angle, the classical angle, um, such as these things, this cushion thing, which for some reason is called a dinerette, which I didn't know it was called that for years, but it's called a dinerette. Maybe that's one of the brands, actually, I don't know for sure. But um, and then we have these suction cup devices that can work on a classical guitar or an acoustic guitar. So a lot of people ask me and I see in comments all the time, they're like, from my YouTube videos, like, how is your guitar staying up? Because it kind of looks like I might be standing and the guitar is kind of floating there and I'm, and I'm gesticulating with my hands in a lot of the videos and the guitar sits there um, and the camera is cut off right here above where I'm using actually one of these cushion dinerette things. And sometimes I'll sit with a, a footstool. Sometimes I'll sit with, I mean, I'm sitting dynamically. I, I'll, a lot of my videos, I'm sitting with the guitar on my right leg, which is the next item on our list here. So this is kind of how we think of a typical uh, guitar position that's not from a classical perspective, sitting on the right leg. Um, and then in that same direction, 
I have a friend who spends a lot of time practicing with his right foot up on a footstool. So there's just a little bit of, it's just raised up a little bit. Um, and then the combination of these things already, we're getting a good combination. Like you sit with this classical angle with the footstool, you switch it to maybe throwing the dinerette in there. You put your right leg um, on uh, you put it on your right leg, you put your right leg on the footstool, you could put the dinerette on your, you know, your right side, and just kind of shifting, shifting, moving around, shifting. I even change chairs that I'm using sometimes, um, and, and sitting, having different, like, spots that I'll sit. Um, obviously, we can use a strap while we're sitting, we can use a strap while we're standing. Um, there are stands that hold the guitar for you. I've tried this once before. I love the idea, but I could not get used to it, personally. Um, I've seen, I've seen, people using them to, to great success. Um, Corey Wong, I saw him post a video of him using one of those stands where it's just sitting, it's just standing there for you. You can walk up to it and start playing. So cool idea. I found that it made me kind of hunch over it a little too much. Um, and then also it doesn't give you much room for the dynamic sitting, right? You can't shift around a bunch, but here's a, here's a cool example of a famous tr absolute virtuoso of a guitar player, Paco de Lucia. Uh, flamenco guitar player and this is his sitting position he'll sit with the with the leg crossed and it on his right leg right so just and then you can just even imagine all the possible variations of, of ways to sit so this is such a different position than what we just saw Targa doing a second ago right so all of these are okay and then we talked about slouching and lounging occasionally i still would say um and any other position or angle you can think of that isn't tense and that you don't stay in for too long, you can really uh, let yourself give it a try. So um, we see all these examples um, and that's very helpful to just drive this point home. Like, okay, dynamic sitting. So um, keep in mind, of course, the guitar type we're playing um, and our own bodies are all different. Um, and the guitar body type that you use might change uh, the way that you, that is most comfortable for you to kind of have as your main spot that you sit in, right? A big dreadnought guitar, you have to kind of reach around, which we'll mention in a second also, um, versus a Telecaster, which I play very often, and that's so thin, you don't have to reach around it with your right hand. So it changes what you, you might prefer, which is also why there are a lot of um, variations. And the other thing is is our own bodies, right? Our own potential, you know, past injuries, our own level of flexibility, or just what happens to be more comfortable for us um, is going to be vastly different as well so um, let's talk about our bodies more um, there are going to be some typical kind of rules of thumb that we can try to adhere to right so it's almost never going to be good to squint squish your shoulders up that's just a tension thing and and i point this out it's on the top of my list here on this page because that's one of my things my left shoulder in particular kind of goes up and it goes towards it cr crunches up towards my chin and and that's a tension thing and i have to consciously remember oh there it is it's up and i got to put it down and, and breathe into it um as far as our wrist angles on either hand this is a, a great little thing you can do right now we can all do this right now there's the the finger wiggle test or the um, make a fist test and all you got to do is arch your wrist on either hand, like arch it all the way. So it's this big hook and then try to try to make a fist or try to wiggle your fingers. And it's very, very, very limited. The range of motion is extremely limited and then bring your wrist straight and then make a fist or wiggle your fingers. And it's like, Oh my gosh, I can actually move. So this is just an indicator that we want to have as straight of a wrist as possible at all times as much as possible. There's so much still that comes up in these moments of playing certain voicing, certain passage, certain something that, um, for me in my own playing, I still feel like I have to arch my wrist, but I, as soon as I can, I'll put my wrist back to be straight. And all you got to do is that finger wiggle or make a fist test to remind ourselves, Oh my gosh, that is such a bad way to play. If, if your wrist is, is arched constantly. And you see this sitting here, this is something I majorly got wrong. I really, um, idealized the idea of having an arched wrist for a long time. I played that way purposefully thinking I was giving space, you know, from between my hand and the strings and the fretboard with like all this clarity on the tips of the fingers and all this stuff. And I played that way really intentionally and even told people to play that way as I was teaching. And, um, you'll see in a lot of my earlier videos, I play more that way than I do now. Now, one of my big things I'm focusing on for my own technique is keeping my wrist straight. And I'm still, um, Get, getting used to it. I'm still catching myself having to, you know, straighten the wrist as much as I can. And it is making a huge difference, especially for just staying pain-free, staying, um, 
you know, preventing injuries and stuff like that. So let's move on to talking about holding a pick and I'll just kind of describe it here. Um, when you hold a pick, the way I would describe it is that you want it to be, you want it to interact with the string like a loose tooth, like it needs to have slack and give when you pull, it's not this rigid grip that you're holding on the pick. It's nice and loose. And I would hold it between the thumb and the first finger. Um, and sometimes if I'm strumming, I'll hold it between the thumb and the first two fingers, but, um, a nice loose with slack pick, like it needs to not fall out of your hand, but otherwise super loose. So when you pluck it on the string, um, it has a little slack and then slides off the string and gets you a nice tone. If it's rigid, if you're squeezing the pick, so it's super hard, by the way, I play with a thick pick, but I, but I play with it loose. So I get to have a nice clean tone. Um, and so I, the, the, what a lot of times people think is, oh, okay, I'm going to hold the pick hard, but I'm going to play with a soft pick that the pick itself is floppy. So it, so it has that give to it. Actually, you can play with any type of pick, but if you play with a hard pick, just hold it loosely. Um, and so that's experiment with that a bit. And then the other thing is to, um, have your pick angled a little bit and it could, it could potentially be angled either direction, but just not straight onto the string, right? I like to angle it up, um, a little bit, uh, towards like a seatbelt angle, like towards my left shoulder angling up that way. So, um, let's talk about the left hand thumb position. I'm having trouble with the, uh, slides not moving along here as I want them to. Let's talk about the left hand thumb position. Um, it's often advised to be mobile and lined up with your middle finger, right? If you're playing all over the place. And I've talked about this a bunch and I've advised this a bunch and I'm, and I'm shifting tiny, a tiny bit on my preference and, and advice on this. Um, but it's often advised, like keep the thumb moving, keep it centered, um, with your middle finger on the other side of the fretboard, like as if it's kind of following along with a magnet. This is really good advice because it keeps us not squeezing. It keeps us not gripping and, and stuck with the, with the thumb. The reason that I often will actually have my thumb kind of high up, um, at times now that I wouldn't, that I didn't used to is just to keep my wrist straight. So I'm prioritizing that thing that we just talked about a bit ago. And these, this is all give and take sometimes, right? So to keep my wrist very straight, I'm sometimes not having my thumb go down the back of the fretboard. Okay. So it just depends case by case by case. As far as the left elbow goes, just watch out that you're not holding it up yourself, that you're not especially holding it out to the left side. Um, you'll see some players like they're playing and their elbows like way up to the left side that they're holding it out. Um, kind of hold on to the neck and just let your elbow swing a little bit and, and let it kind of be sitting off to your left side in a nice comfortable kind of way that gravity is helping that gravity is going to help with the pressure that you need to play notes and, and even make bar chords as well. So, um, as far as the right arm reaching around, that's just kind of straightforward just to be careful. If you do have a big guitar where you have to reach around, maybe just angle the guitar upward a little more. So it's not this, this huge reach around, um, feeling depending on if you're feeling any tension from it or not. So, um, here's a big one. That's really interesting. L your left hand fingers or the fretting hand fingers rather don't have to be straight on perfectly on the tips. That's such a thing that, um, sometimes people focus on unnecessarily and too early. It's important to be able to play um, the, to, to the extent that playing on the very tips of the fingers is important, it's so we can let other strings ring. And I have exercises all about, you know, how to work on that and stuff like that. But even that, where you're trying to play on the tips of your fingers and let strings around it ring and not get muted. Um, it's quite interesting. Actually, the, the first finger, you know, might be off to the side a little bit. The pinky might be playing off to the side of the tip a little bit. So, um, other than that though, if the music doesn't need it, you do actually don't have to stress about playing on the tips of the fingers much at all. It can be, it can be a little more flat on the finger. It can be even part of intentionally muting strings to play a cleaner sound. So all of this, you know, I don't want it to ever sound like I'm trying to give some, some idealistic kind of rules, rules of thumb, so to speak, but um, all of this, we can kind of sense this overarching theme since, since the beginning that like, wow, it's all so dynamic. It's all so individualized and potential for kind of finding your own comfort level and, and the way you want to do things. Um, and, and there are these, these benchmarks to shoot for, but as, but as long as you're staying relaxed and you're comfortable, you can, you have a lot of wiggle room 
to find your own way to to have your own ergonomic relationship with the guitar so um the left hand fingers uh this is a great one to just straight up drill on and i did a video about it um where we just want to try to have i should say our fretting hand fingers because if you're not if you're if you're left-handed playing the other way our fretting hand fingers we want to have them be about half an inch away from the strings this is um pretty much impossibly hard and never going to happen if we don't do it intentionally. like nobody's going to accidentally just not know that they're happen to be doing a good job at keeping their fingers that close to the strings like you have to intentionally work on it um and i have exercises on that and I, put, I have one on youtube about that as well um so that's a game changer though over the long 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 haul to have your fingers closer to the strings and not flying way off and having to bring them back so it's kind of a nice um little rule to to be thinking of and then i like this rejecting rigidity um really you know there's all this room for our own individuality but among all of that we just want to establish fluid movements fluid thumb fluid wrist fluid arm we want to be mobile and not rigid on top of the dynamic sitting where we can kind of let ourselves change positions and stuff but as far as our body angles and stuff fluid 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 nothing should be rigid even the wrist angle should be able to kind of change on a dime for a moment as it needs to or the where the thumb is should never feel like it's like gripped and locked on in one place like fluid movement fluid arm fluid elbow even for part of you know switching so if you do it right now you just kind of like do some loosey goosey movements and kind of shake your shake your arms a little bit we get this sense of like wow that's so kind of fluid and relaxing and we want to have that while we're playing um really as much as possible so this final thing here is just to say once again because i can never say it enough just be aware of tension attention awareness reminder and if we can actively do this and it's, it's an annoying you know, if we're not used to doing this it does not feel appealing to suddenly try to work on this but if, if you can and you notice something where there's tension then it, it can it can be a huge help for our physical relationship with with playing an instrument so watch and scan for tension anywhere and i'll do this in the middle of practicing just stop and kind of like feel through my body and, and be like is there anywhere is it where is it and it's almost always somewhere right nobody's got that perfect um and i did say especially in your face this is again from my own experience i will tense up in my mouth and it's like that has nothing to do with playing the guitar and i'll see players do that too i'll you know went to a concert uh somewhat recently and saw you know the playing was great but it did feel very tense and and i could see the the performer um tensing up in their mouth and their face as they're playing um, and to me that took away not just visually I mean but like I could hear the music sounded like the way their face looked <laughs> and so it it made a different it makes a difference this this tension that we have and I think of the face tension as kind of the canary in the coal mine like if there's tension in the face it's an indicator of too much tension in how we're playing the music and potential other places and everything so it could be one place where you just think of is there tension in the face anywhere while I'm playing if there's not that might be a good sign that that relaxation is um, taking place in other places in the body as well and then lastly intentionally breathing while playing makes a big difference i do this every time i play when i do um, a specific warm-up or two um, while i'm doing it i take big breaths and obviously it's great to get oxygen deep breathing is known and, and kind of proven to be um, really good for stress relief and everything like that but it just really gets me in the zone physically and mentally for for playing in a more relaxed way so intentionally breathing while i'm playing not all the time i'm not trying to do it while i'm working on other things that i'm focusing on that are challenging but i'll do it as part of a warm-up and try to remember to do it if i notice tension and stuff like that and if i do notice tension somewhere i kind of try to visualize or imagine breathing in to that space so that um is the end of that one uh video presentation that's just about the ergonomics the body relationships the angles i do hope you found that valuable i just want to share with you since we're since we're sharing some of this here i'm just jumped to a different place in in the course here just because that was early on in in the curriculum and i have a bunch of exercises and each exercise has um is listed with all the specific results one could get out of one exercise and this is one of my big kind of um, thesis premises that 
any one exercise. It's not just what it is. You don't just do it and, and say, cool, I did that exercise and I got better. You think of what, what could this do for me? What is the problem I'm trying to solve? And, and why am I working on this? And then um, use it for that. So this one exercise that I'm calling the ang angular prowess fretboard workout could get any of these benefits if you want to work on cord rolling or overall speed or strumming control or like it's the same exercise or series of exercises, but with different things you could, you could focus on in your playing. So I have all this sheet music written out and there's a workbook book that comes along with it and everything like that. This is one of my favorite exercises. I really like this. Have, uh, you know, different, you could do it with your hands or with, with your fingers and different finger combinations or with a pick and all of that stuff. So, um, and then different variations on it, uh, chord version of the same exercise. Here's an example of a practice tracker that I use. If you were doing this angular exercise and you write down what you're focusing on, what the rules are to pass it, um, and then what tempo you're trying to do. And then if you get it right, you write it down and cool stuff like that. Here's another version of the same exercise. So just wanted to share with you some of the sheet music. If you want to learn more about my course, Top Notch Technique, just click the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash TNT. If you're watching this video during the week that it comes out, then you can enroll early for a huge discount. Um, and you can watch along as I film live next week and just all the kind of the live filming schedule for uh, filming the whole course, two modules, five days in a row. Each one's going to have a Q and a at the end of it. And it's going to be uh, going to be a fun time. Um, so I, I do hope you found this video valuable, totally on its own. I would not put something on YouTube if I, it wasn't something that I thought could be helpful for you. Um, even if you never sign up for one of my courses ever, that is totally fine. I still want to bring you the best lessons that I can week in and week out here on YouTube in the, in the free lesson space. That being said, I post a video every single week. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.